What's up everybody? It's 12.33 in the morning. I can't sleep, so I decided to put together a little video for you guys I've been meaning to make. Uh, talking about halibut fishing from shore. And what I use, uh, start with the rods. I've got two rods here that I picked out that I like to use. The first is a Shakespeare Ugly Stick. And it is a 7 foot medium action rated for 10 to 25 pounds I've got 20 pound mono on it I like the spinning reel because the spinning reel is less troublesome especially if you're going to be doing a lot of casting I also have a bait caster here that I like to use and this is the one I used one of the rods I used last time I was out I used two bait casters and I got my personal best backlash I just got my personal best, personal best backlash ever. How the fuck? Bird's nest, you can see it's still in there. I haven't even taken it out yet. I think I'm going to do a video about how to take that out in the near future. Um, but this is a Dobbins. And it is a uh, 12 to 25 pound rating. Uh, mag heavy fast action frog pitching flipping small swim bait rod with an Abu Garcia uh, silver max six bearing bait casting reel with 30 pound braid on it and that braid is tough line so to the baits um, I like to use my favorite color is white for uh, for this type of fishing and uh, I've got a variety of things here including these and I usually will make a high low rig and if you've got the 25 I got the since I have braid on the Dobbins I would make a leader with 25 pound mono and attach it to the to the uh, braid with a swivel so what I'd like to do is put a bucktail on the bottom of my leader at the end of my mono line on my other pole here's a heavier one that I was using off of a boat recently um, I've got these tails I got these from Bay Tackle in El Cerrito and I've got these tails in chartreuse and uh, like a, a glittered chartreuse color and they glow this has a glow head also um, they didn't have white I would have liked to have gotten white tails it would have been better for me so just to show you that you know I put a tail on it but you could I'm gonna use this one for uh, demonstration purposes without a tail um, and you could fish it without a tail so let's just, just imagine that this 25 pound mono is coming off either my spinning reel on my ugly stick or it's going to be the leader, leader material on my Dobbins. Um, so what I do, I would just tie this on first. And I, I would use a clinch knot. Okay, I would just take the line, cross it over the... Take the tag line, tag in, cross it over. And I would spin this around about se six or seven times. Okay, that's enough. Then I take the tag in and put it through the loop in the um, knot down by the eye on the bait. Lubricate the knot. Pull both ends, mostly con mostly concentrating your your pressure on this line with some light pressure on this tag in. And cinch it up. Then I always would back my knot up with uh, a half hitch on right up next to there. But the knot, once I get the knot started like that, then I would take my finger and push it up close to the other knot and then pull the tag in. And that'll put my knot right up by the other knot. So it's close. I usually can get a little closer like than that than I'm, if I'm not doing it on camera. 
and then trim the excess and then it would look like that so now I'm going to cut some of this line so I don't got to mess with the spool I would go I would go up uh, about a foot to a foot and a half from the bucktail that's basically going to serve like a weight and an extra bait I'd go up about a foot, foot and a half, and I would make a dropper loop. So I'd wrap the line around the drop around to make the rock drop or loop I wrap it around seven times then I open up the uh, the two lines in the middle and then I push it through the hole that I, right there and there get my dropper loop started right there see it's starting to come together and I lubricate it and complete the knot by cinching it up okay so now that's what we got we got the bucktail on the bottom with the dropper loop about a foot and a half up now I'd usually like to use um, a swim bait or a grub or something that's lighter than this so that this will always stay on the bottom when I'm casting and stuff so I'll find something that I like to use and it may be I have a couple things here so here's one that I used last time uh, it's just a 3 inch or 4 inch grub and I use the, uh, the mustad hook so there's no weight on this one at all I would use that on top above on the dropper loop or I would use one of my Kitek. This is a, a Kitek uh, swim bait with a uh, thick that's a 3A ounce jig head that could go above the bucktail. Um, I've got some different different colors here too, and some different types. Here's one with an underspin. Here's a swim bait with an underspin. I probably would not use the underspin. But these are good colors. Um, another Kitek. This one's more of an anchovy color. There's more one that looks a little more like a sardine. I can't remember what what make this is with a lighter jig head. So let me again show you. Uh, let's go with. Uh, let's go with the white one. I, I tend to like white for this. I think white is a good color for a little bit. So, here's the bucktail. <clears throat> Again, I would probably try to put a white tail on there. So, about a foot and a half up is the dropper loop. And then to put this swim bait on the dropper loop, I would close the end of the dropper loop to make a tip on it. Like that, and then I would take my swim bait and I would go through the eyelet on the jig head. Oh, uh, it's got some paint in the hole, but I was able to make it through. So then I would straighten out the dropper loop to make sure there's no twist in it. Then you just pass the bait through the dropper loop and and then close close it up on the eyelet like that so now you're fishing with two baits you got the heavier bait on the bottom the bucktail with the swim bait on the dropper loop now when you're fishing this if you're casting from shore this one will be on the the ground or on the bottom under the water and this one you see is probably it's right in the strike zone because the halibut 
are going to be laying on the bottom and ambushing and that's right in the strike zone that's putting the bait they're most likely going to hit this one they can hit this one too but that's right in the strike zone that's right about that's going to end up being about eight to ten inches above the bottom where those halibut are hanging out and that's going to go right by him and he's going to see it and strike on it the other thing you can do too is uh instead of using a bucktail you can use a one to two ounce um, torpedo weight and just kind of drop drop shot style fish it instead of putting the bucktail you could put you can put a one to two ounce torpedo weight and that will fish very good too but I kind of like the idea of having two baits so that's what I do and when you're fishing for halibut like this you're also most likely going to catch some striped bass yeah baby striped bass June so again instead of using um, that grub or the swim bait as the upper bait on the high low rig I showed these jigs um, in my rockfish video that I made about a week ago and I would definitely use one of these but again I would try to get a white tail for it these are great for rockfish by the way I'm probably gonna be going out on Monday and I will be fishing these and I will be making a video and I will be catching fish but I also like uh, I got these at the bait shop down by K-Doc in Berkeley um, these are really cool um, anchovies they look they look just like an anchovy and I put that jig head on there I had to cut a little bit of the nose off you can see to make it fit the way I wanted to um, but I like these a lot uh, they're really cool looking to me I actually haven't fished them yet but I think they'll work, work really good um, and then of course you could always go with some swim baits you know these will work I would go you know I wouldn't fish a swim bait or anything bigger than say like five six inches is perfect size and 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 smaller you can go down to even three inch I've got some smaller grubs here that I would also fish as my upper bait these ones I get at the sportsman's warehouse in Fairfield um, and by the way they make these in a smaller size uh, I think a, a two inch size or maybe smaller I'm not sure but these same colors in the smaller size are killer for crappie and bluegill and I would do the same thing a high low rig and I would have them about a foot and a half two feet apart and sometimes I'd fish them on the bottom sometimes if the fish are suspended I'd find them suspended I wouldn't fish all the way on the bottom but man I slay crappie check out my video humdinger stringer at Lake Berryessa. Another big one. Two. That's two again. <laughs> Dude, I was cleaning up. Um, and then just, you know, I got some other kind of, these are good hooks to, to use with the grubs and stuff too. So then I got these three kinds of hooks is like three that I would go to. These are, these are good. And I got these these swim baits right here are nice too. I like I would I just got these. I definitely um, look forward to trying these out and these ones. I'm a fan of white. What can I say? They're good for. I really like that color for uh, for the halibut. And then you know some other jig heads. Nothing real heavy. And so, you know, like I said earlier, you know, the bait casting reels are kind of a pain in the ass for me. I haven't fished with them a lot my whole life. I've always, I mean, they just, I don't like something that's going to give me trouble when I'm fishing. And I don't like taking a bird's nest out. And although most of the time I don't bird's nest, I hate it when it does happen. So I usually just stay away from that and just go with the spinning reel. It's just simpler and more convenient and less troublesome uh, in fact when I bought this rod 
and my other uh, bait caster rod I was fishing for largemouth bass but shortly thereafter I quit fishing for largemouth bass because I don't eat them and uh, I like to eat fish plus I like to catch salt water I mostly concentrate on salt water that's my favorite um, so I mostly use those bass rods for catfish I've caught a lot of big catfish at Lake Berryessa on that rod I got his head up. Got his ass. What's up? Ah, he's like, that's at least 20 pounds right there. Yeah, boy. And, uh, but it's, I do like it for casting jigs for striped bass and for halibut. Um, just unfortunately, last time I got my personal best bird's nest and I still, I didn't, I wasn't able to get it out. So I just grabbed my other rod and, uh, so. I may be making a video soon, probably will, if provided I can get it out without having to cut the line out. So, anyways, you know, with, with the grubs, you know, I got a few different colors here too. Um, I think probably I like the white and the chartreuse the best, but, you know, that's a pretty cool color too. I think that would work good. So, I guess that about wraps it up, you know. So, but, oh, again, the other thing. Uh, so, there's places all over the Bay Area you can go do this for Pacific hal halibut. Like, uh, out in San Rafael, you know, Marin County out there on the pier in Paradise and areas like that. Uh, off the uh, the Rock Wall in Alameda, the Rock Wall in Richmond. Um, just try to find places where you can cast out um, and not be in really really shallow mud but you'll find halibut in shallow water so it doesn't have to be very deep and I would just cast it out there once it hits the water I'll feed a little bit of line off my reel so it'll drop straight down instead of it'll drop straight down instead of pulling back towards me so when it when my baits hit the water I feed extra line off of the reel till it hits the bottom so it has a tendency to stay out further instead of coming back towards me um, and then I'll just take the slack out and I just kind of pop it back slow reeling and popping just kind of start jigging it back to yourself and uh, wait for that bite and keep trying or a slow steady retrieval just fan cast and move up and down the shore or the, the rock wall and, uh, and work that thing and you'll get fish so I hope that helps Fred you know we were talking about this the other day and I told you I was going to do it. So here it is. I uh, hope you enjoy it. I hope you uh, have good luck out there fishing. If you got any questions, put them in the comments. If I can help, I will. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I've got new material coming out. I try to put out at least one video a week. Um, I've got something really cool. I got something really good coming up my coming off my sleeve uh, in the near future that I'm going to be shooting probably next probably in the middle of next week something unique that you have not seen yet and I think you're gonna love it I'm excited about it so uh, yeah we'll see you next time please subscribe have a good time fishing man see you later